it's Hey Libby here and I'm back with another video and today I am in the home office because I thought it would be cool to start filming videos where the topic fits the location that I'm in. So obviously today is a career video. My full time job is not a YouTuber, obviously because I post like one video every month, but I actually am a product manager in tech. And I studied business information systems, like I mentioned in my last academics and ECs video. An internship at Atlassian in my penultimate year, and I ended up going there after I graduated. But the thing was, when I actually joined as a grad, I still didn't really know what a product manager did. And true, I did a three month long internship in product management at the same company, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> And so before I started grad officially, I asked my friend who was there and been working there for a year, like, what did he do day to day? And he was like, I sit at my desk and I think about what's next. And I was like, go on, like, is that it? You sit at your desk? And so after reflecting back almost two years now into product management, I can totally see what he meant, like you do actually just sit there and think about what's next. But hopefully in today's video, what I'm going to share is some of the more granular details of the day to day activities in terms of how to figure out what is next. For those who haven't heard of product management before, here is the 101. PM, known as product management and not project management, is on the business side of building things. A little bit of history here, it has roots back to the 1930s, stemming from P&G where it kicked off and they positioned it kind of as brand management. It's since evolved a lot into the tech industry and more and more you'll see that product management is a very popular role within organisations. The awesome thing about it that I love is it gives an alternative pathway for students who are studying business into something other than consulting, investment making, uh, business analyst. So yeah, it is another exciting option. And in a nutshell, product management is about owning a product or a part of it that you're working with your team to build and figuring out what are the next most important problems to solve. And despite having the word manager in its role, I just want to clarify because a lot of people get this wrong. You are not actually managing any like people. So there's no HR, people management side of things. Instead, you are owning the product. So it's a different kind of management in a way. Okay, so what do product managers actually work on? This is my biggest question. Well, a couple of quotes that I found useful to describe product management is firstly, a product owner is like the mini CEO of the product. And secondly, a product manager describes the what, the why, and the who, and they work together with their designer and developer to figure out the how. Product management is this intersection of business, design, and technology. And that is what makes it so fun because it's so broad, you get to try a little bit of everything. The craft itself is actually really broad, so you kind of have so many different things that you could choose to focus on. And so some of the things that a product manager might focus on are firstly, what is the vision of a product and how do you influence your team to get behind it? Secondly, what is your strategy to get to that vision? The why, the what, the who, the how. You also might be working with design to ideate on high level customer journeys. And then you also touch into the execution side of things. So executing an idea and understanding whether it was successful or not. I've actually found that one of the best ways to explain what a product manager does is to walk you through the delivery cycle at a high level when walking across uh, how to deliver a feature or a product or something that you're building you will go through some of these steps in a cyclical way. The first thing is starting with the vision and strategy. Like what are you aiming for? Like what kind of behaviors are you targeting? What is your goal of this whole thing? And where do you see it going? Then as part of a product manager's role, you'd be talking to a lot of customers, running customer interviews, maybe drawing insights from analytics and things like that to determine, okay, what are the most important things for us to do next and why are they important? And then when you've decided that you're actually going to build the thing, you'll start to work with your team to conceptualize it. I think up to this point, this is where product managers are more involved in terms of like the early stage thinking of something. And then the next step is to start implementing it. Here's a point where you might actually take a step back and start thinking about even more in the future. What's the next thing after this? 
and most of the time with the dev team you'll be working to unblock some of like the decisions that come up unexpectedly. And then when this feature is ready, you need to put your marketing hat on and figure out how you're actually going to broadcast that this thing is released to your customers. Like, are you going to write a blog post? Are you going to send out an email blast? Is it enough to warrant a marketing campaign over it? And you also need to start figuring out as well the rollout strategy. Like, how is this going to go out to your customers? Are you going to start with shipping it to everyone at once or is it going to go out to 5% of customers first and then 10% and gradually roll out? So those are some of the decisions or thinking that you will be doing at this point. And then when you've actually released the feature and it's out there, the journey is not over. This is the point where earlier on you should have been thinking about like what are the goals we're trying to achieve with building this thing and what are some of the success metrics that we want to be monitoring here. So at this point you'd still be keeping a close eye on the feature in your analytics or through customer interviews later on to figure out have we actually been successful by doing this thing or do we need to come back and revisit it and iterate on it. Then you do it all over again for the next thing. And obviously this isn't the same exact process that you'll go through every single time. There's a lot of little nuances or things that will change. Sometimes you do less, sometimes you need to do more. It's just completely dependent on the type of project and the team that you're in. And so with this, you can actually see that a product manager wears a ton of different hats across the business. And as you grow in the craft, you'll find yourself leaning towards certain strengths more and more. And I think that's why you start to see that there are so many different types of product managers in the world. So you've got your technical product managers, you've got marketing product managers, uh, strategic ones, data analytics ones. So yeah, a ton of different product manager types. One way that you can start to look at this is by mapping it on the product management pyramid. So on this pyramid, there are three points and they kind of indicate where you may lean more towards. So one of the points is like general manager, so business side. Another point might be scientist. And then the last point is artist. You can then like map yourself anywhere on this triangle in terms of where you think you're starting to lean towards. So for example, for myself, I think I would put myself closer to like the general manager and uh, scientist side of things. And what's interesting is, although many people may look at this and think straight away like being in the middle is the best because that means you're well-rounded and everything, that is not always the case. Finding your streak and playing to that strength can be really awesome. And then you can supplement some of the places where you're weaker with other people who have streaks in the other points. So what does a day in my life as a product manager actually look like? Well, I filmed a day in my life as a product manager work from home video a year ago or something like that. So uh, you can definitely check that out. That one was full of meetings. So it was a very hectic day for me. But the thing is, like I said in that video, every day can be very different. And it depends on the team you're in, the work that you're focused on at that point. And so this usually means that when I come in to start my day, because I'm a very, very strong J personality, so I like structure, I like organization, I always start my day planning what I'm actually going to do that day, what are my focuses and highlights, and I will check my emails, my Slack messages, my notifications, check customer feedback, just kind of situate myself into the rest of the day. Then I'll tend to have a lot of meetings in the morning actually because some of our team work in the US and Canada, so that's the time zone that overlaps for us. And these meetings will usually be like catch-ups or sessions where we're talking about priorities and what we're building next. Or we'll go deep into a feature we're working on at the moment, see designs and provide feedback. And then in the afternoons, I try to save a lot more time for getting shit done and like doing deep product work. So this might mean I'm writing out a spec page or putting thoughts on paper for a part of our strategy or I'm running a customer interview and reflecting on the insights from that. But I think that's the beauty and the craziness of product management, which is there is a never ending to do list of tasks that you could be doing, but no one is really expecting you to have a task ready for them by a certain deadline most of the time. Instead, it's on you to choose what you think is the most important thing to be doing each and every day. So this then takes me into what parts of product management do I love and what parts do I find challenging? 
Three things that I love in product management. Firstly, it's always exciting and different. Like you wouldn't have noticed already, I've spoken about it many times. There's just so many different things that you can do in product management. It's a very, very broad area. And so you could be working on marketing one week and then the next week you're looking at like more specific technical things and then you're looking at design. And yeah, there's just a heap there. So every day is very different and it's always very exciting. There's new problems to solve all the time. The second thing is I like that you do get to be involved in the end to end journey of something that you're building. So basically you get to be there from ideation all the way to actually executing it and seeing it get released and customers start using it and then they provide feedback and it's just a very like complete cycle which is really nice and I think this is especially exciting when you are working on a new product or you're in a startup and you're just like basically this idea is your baby and it's like growing and you are trying to facilitate that growth as much as you can so yes it is very rewarding. Is this how parents feel when they talk about their kids? And then lastly, I think you'll always find there are interesting problems to solve and it's very customer focused. And I do like that. I like talking to customers and hearing about their feedback. When I first joined this new product I'm working on, it was described to me as a tool for status reporting. And I didn't have a very clear idea on what status reporting was other than the term. So I was like, Ugh, like status reporting, that, that doesn't sound that fun, but What's crazy is over the year that I've been working on it, I just never realized I was so passionate about status reporting or project communication or all those kinds of things, which are very businessy corporate things. But yeah, there are a lot of exciting problems to solve in it. Okay, so then what three things have I found challenging about product management? There are many challenging things actually. Firstly, ambiguity. As you know, I'm a J. And I think in product management, there's always going to be a lot of ambiguity because you're coming in trying to figure out what is next, which then means every day you don't really have a specific set of tasks or things that you are being told to do. And instead, you try to fill out your time with things that you think that are important to be worked on. But no one's gonna say like, hey, you need to do this today or you need to do that. The second thing I find challenging is being a leader, especially early on in your career. And I know like coming in as a product manager, you're not a people leader, like I said, you're not like a leader of the team or anything. But in Atlassian, how it works is you're part of a triad and that's made up of a product manager, a designer and an engineering lead. And so they work together to figure out the strategic direction. As part of that, I would say like there is to an extent where you are leading the vision and the product for that team. Now that becomes pretty difficult when you are early on in your career and you haven't built up prior experience, you don't have that credibility just yet and you're expected to step in as a leader pretty much. So I struggled with that a lot when I first started, especially in my first rotation where I just did not know what a product manager did. So I was already trying to struggle with that. And then there were expectations on me to be a step up as a leader in the team. And I was kind of like, I have no idea what's going on right now. The third thing I find challenging about being a product manager is the people skills that comes along with the craft. And I think with product management, like you're talking to your team, you're talking to other teams, to customers, to stakeholders, all these kinds of things. You're basically a spokesperson for the customer in and for the product out. This typically points to extroverts um, succeeding a lot in the product management craft. And I am, extremely introverted like there are times where I have really close friends I see them in public when I'm alone and I'm not expecting them and I will hide even though they're my really close friends it can be really hard I think to adjust to some of those expectations and the activities in product management as an introvert introverts can be really successful in PM but you kind of need to switch up how you approach things and like use different tactics or different strengths that you are good at rather than trying to force yourself into this persona that a lot of people will expect you to be. Now, where can you get started in product management? There is actually a lot of opportunity out there at the moment, so lucky you. Check out opportunities in big tech companies like Google, Facebook, Atlassian, Canva. There's heaps and heaps of startups that you could probably reach out to. Uh, do an internship there in product management, just figure out like 
how they do things. Because I think in a startup world, there is a ton of product thinking to be done. So that's a really good opportunity. And then check out some of these book recommendations, as well as this podcast recommendation. And yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's kind of what I do in my job outside of YouTube. And one of the reasons other than Oztag that I suck at keeping a schedule up on my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I can make subsequent videos on this. I can answer your questions. If you've enjoyed this, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends and yeah, all the notification bell stuff. <laughs> But I will see you guys next time. Hopefully you enjoyed. Bye. Smiling every day with Hey Lily.